family welcome back to my channel listen y'all i had a dream last night and of course you know i'm jumping on here because i want to share i believe my dreams are prophetic and it's a message not just for me but for those who tune into my videos so i got my little notes here and i would just jump right into the dream. I had a dream that i was sitting in court waiting for the judge to call my name to hear my case for divorce not only did he call my name, but he announced to everyone in the courtroom, including to my ex-husband who was sitting on the other side. The judge said, I want to announce to the court that me and Marquita Pritchard, come on up Marquita, and I was looking lovely y'all. I had this nice creative looking dress with like this split, it was like real high, <laughs> but it was so cute. He said, he um, said, sit right next to me. So I sat in like, the, the area, I wanted to say the pew, but it was like right there next to the judge. I don't know what that's called, but that area. So um, I sat next to him. He said, we are now boyfriend, girlfriend. We are together. We are an item. He said it just like that. We are an item. I was like, wow. Some people were like, whoa. <laughs> My ex-husband was just sitting there. And however, I thought to myself, wow, Lord, I never thought I would be with a man like that. The judge was also an African-American preacher who was well-known and always decked out in designer brands. Then the judge had a male friend in the court who ended up getting angry at something and he started to yell. The judge was like, what are you doing? The man said something like, they made me mad. What am I supposed to do? The judge said, say nothing. I was thinking, he is messing up. That man better chill. Later that day, I told my kids what happened in court and they were like, for real? I said, yep, I was sitting right next to him when he announced to the whole room that my oldest daughter was driving with my youngest daughter in the passenger seat to pick up my son. I told her to not talk and drive because she can get distracted. So when they got back to my house, uh, my children were happy for me. I told my oldest daughter, I think we didn't want, I think he didn't want his ex because she had a three-year-old. And my oldest daughter said, what does that mean? I said, when you have a small, when you have small children, they require a lot of your attention. So he was probably just seeing her back a lot of times. This is how I interpret the dream. You could pray for your own interpretation, but this is what I got, okay? So the judge in the dream to me symbolizes Jesus, the judge. Now the judge announcing our relationship symbolizes these two scriptures. So this first scripture is from James chapter two, verse 23. And it says, and so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. Like what an honor for God to call you his friend. So the next scripture I had was Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 11. It says, the Lord said, surely I will deliver you for a good purpose. Surely I will make your enemies plead with you in times of disaster and times of distress. Surely I will deliver you for a good purpose. Like God was there he, when he announced it, when the judge announced it to the courtroom, I was just like, I never thought that my divorce was, would turn out like this. You know, it was like, wow, God, like that's such an honor. And in my mind, I said that. I was just thinking like, wow, God, I never thought I would be with a man like this. You know, <laughs> it was just such an honor. The man yelling and the judge saying, what are you doing? And the man says, they made, they made me mad. What am I supposed to do? The judge said, say nothing. So this part of the dream refers to Philippians chapter two, verse 14 through 16. And it says, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain because we got to understand that 
when we're fussing and cussing and arguing and that's not a reflection of God. You see what I'm saying? Like in the scripture, he's talking about so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. So that you may become blameless and pure children of God. How are we going to become blameless and pure children of God if we're fussing and we're allowing the enemy to, you know, be in control of our attitude and our emotions? We can't do that. How are we going to be? We can't be blamed and peerless that way. You're not going to sit here and tell me that someone that's fussing and cussing me out is a reflection of God. It's not. That's why the judge was saying, who I believe represents Jesus, he was telling him, okay, I understand you're angry, but you don't have to yell and fuss. Just say nothing. I believe that that is the time for us to go into prayer. When people make us mad, they make us upset, or, you know, uh, we just feel irritated and we just want to fuss them out and get back at them. That's the time for us to give it to God. That's the time for us to pray and say, Father God, this person is really making me mad. And I really feel like I want to fuss them out. And but I know that's not a reflection of you. So what should I do? What can I do? Take it to God in prayer. Get into praise and worship and just pray for that individual. I know it's not easy and I know it's not typical, and but the Bible tells us to love our enemies. That's because, and the reason why we have to love our enemies because we're showing that we're like our father in heaven. You understand? Three children and the three-year-old symbolizes, um, my three children and the, the three-year-old in the dream symbolizes the number three, which means completeness. Jesus prayed three times in the garden of Gethsemane before his arrest. He was placed on the cross at the third hour of the day, which is 9 a.m., and died at the ninth hour. There were three hours of darkness that covered the land while Jesus was suffering on the cross from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. This is the number of resurrection. Christ was dead for three full days and nights of 72 hours before being resurrected on Saturday, April 8th, just before sunset. And this is from biblestudy.org. So um, this dream, like <laughs> the way I felt when I woke up this morning, I was just like, this dream is just, it's so lovely. It's so pure. And it's just like, wow, God, like I received this dream. I love this dream. Like when, when he made, when the judge made the announcement to everyone, it was just like, to me, it just was like a uh, a covenant was established. You know, it's just like, this is mine, I am hers, we are an item. Like he made it very clear, like we are an item. Like we're one, you understand? And oh, that just, it was just such an awesome, it was just such an awesome blessing. Um, but I put in my notes, literally the best news a person can receive. I am a friend of God and I truly believe that. But also not only that, but the covenant was established before a multitude of witnesses. And it was like, when I tell you the courtroom was packed, it was packed with people, including my ex-husband. And for that to be announced to everyone was just <laughs> like everything in me was like, ah, like I just was just so happy. So um, God loves you and he loves me. And for him to consider us friends is truly, truly an honor and a privilege. So I put in my notes here. I was like, I love you, Father Jesus. You will forever be my everything. I'm so in love. So I just pray that we all will get to that place where we are just so in love and sold out for Jesus Christ. Like if you think about it, there is nobody, not even my earthly dad would die for me. However, Jesus died on the cross, not just for me, but for you as well, and for the entire world. See, a lot of people don't understand that Jesus is God. This is why he is so, so, so very important. He is, he is everything. When I tell you he's my everything, Jesus is literally my everything. He is my counselor. He's my husband. He's my father figure, my mother. He's every void that I had in my life. He's the filler of every void that I've ever had in my life. I remember times when I was younger, I had many, many of voids and I would try to fill it with sex. I don't know if you follow me, but sexual immorality was my downfall. I mean, from an early age, I started looking at pornography. I, um, 
I found some of my dad's magazines in the house and some of his tapes. Um, I guess he was trying to hide from me and my sister. We used to put those tapes in and watch it. And I just felt like the enemy was just entering through my eyeballs. And as I got older, I became more and more wanting to um, have sex. Granted, I was a virgin throughout high school, but that's because I feared my dad, my earthly father. So he used to always say, well, you better not bring no babies in this house. If you bring a baby in this house, you and that baby gonna get out. So I was like, oh, I ain't having no sex because I wanna be homeless, you know? But when the moment I got on my own, I'm thinking I'm grown, child. And I was out there having sex and trying to fill voids that were in my life. Cause I had lost my mom early. Um, I just, I did not feel genuinely loved, you know? Like my dad tried the best he could, but for my opinion, my dad was really concerned about women. His, his concern was the next woman, the next woman, you know, it wasn't so much, you know, checking on the well-being or the, um, mental health of his children, his daughters. It just was, I felt like he was more focused on his relationship and his life being fulfilled more so than his children well-being being met. You understand? Like, um, our psyche, our mental, our emotional, our, definitely our spiritual was like depleted. And we were not in church. I did not grow up in church. My dad did not take us to church. We just, we just was in the house a lot of times. And he did not allow me to do a lot of things when I was younger. I just felt like I was really isolated. And then when it was time for me to move out onto my own, then that's when it was like, woo, this girl, she wow, boy, I need to, I needed to chill out. But I just, I wanted that feeling. And when I had a man close to me, it just felt like, it felt good at the time. But as soon as they left me, it was just like this gaping hole that was in me. And I was just like, ugh, like I was trying to make a man my everything. And he could never be my everything. I could never... No man in this entire world could ever fill the void that I had. Only Jesus. Jesus was the only one that could fill that void that was in me. This is why I don't practice sexual immorality, no masturbation, no pornography, no um, lustful thoughts. Those things, they are no more. Like, I cannot go backwards because God has just been too, 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 too good to me. I just made this video because I believe Holy Spirit wants me to let you know that you are a friend of his. And when I don't think that girlfriend, boyfriend, like I don't want to hold on to that. I don't want you to think about that too tightly. Like, oh, he calls you his girlfriend. Like, we're friends. Like we, if Holy Spirit is saying that you are his friend, that is an honor. That is a true, true honor. Just like it was in the scripture where I believe it was, was it Abraham? He said, and so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. That, every time I see it, it's just like, what an honor. Just when I had that dream, I'm like, what an honor. What an honor to be the friend of God. That is, that is, <laughs> that's the greatest news ever for, for it to be announced. And it's like, I'm making this known. It's like this covenant is sealed. Like we are one, we are an item. And that just, uh, like the sky is the limit. Like <laughs> I'm just so grateful. And I just pray that you all will feel grateful as well and build your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I do believe that if you're under the sound of my voice and you have found this video that God considers you to a friend of his. So just cherish that friendship, nurture that friendship. You know, um, I think someone said something like, how can you have a relationship with someone if you never talk to them? And it's something to think about. So how can we have this great friendship if I don't build a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, if I'm never praying and never talking to him about my day-to-day -day living, because we got to understand that God cares about the details of our lives. But if we're never speaking to him and talking to him, how are we really genuinely nurturing that, that relationship? We're not. We're neglecting it. 
And if you think about it, if you were dating someone and that person never called you, they didn't want to come see you, they didn't want to talk to you, you would think they're not interested in you. So I believe it's the same thing with our relationship with Jesus Christ. We must nurture that relationship. We must talk to him. I mean, it's times where I'm like, Father God, I don't even know what I should do or, you know, where should I stay and where should I apply and, you know, to move at and, you know, what's going to happen with this or that or, you know, what should I do with, as far as my diet? I'm trying to lose more weight. You know, what should I do? I mean, come on now. You just got to be that down to earth about it and talk to him because remember him, Holy Spirit, he's living and in, in dwelling within you. So um, I remember somebody used to say, um, if you want to see Jesus, look in the mirror. And now I get it because I'm like, if him, Holy Spirit is living within you, I mean, come on now. He's the one that's giving me the ability to move and have my being. So talk to yourself, you know, talk to yourself at time. Look at yourself in the mirror and like, I love you, Holy Spirit. I just thank you for life. I thank you for this relationship. I thank you for your love, the love that you constantly show me. I'm truly honored and truly blessed that you're in my life and you found me. You found me in the midst of darkness. You found me when I was in deep waters. When I didn't want to even, when I wasn't even nurturing our relationship, you found me. You know, it's just something to think about. I truly, truly love y'all and I thank y'all for watching this video. And I want to close out with a word of prayer. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We just thank you for this beautiful day of life. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for a friendship. Thank you for, for just being our Father and being everything that it is we need when we need it. Father, we truly love you. We just honor you and thank you for life, life itself. I just ask that you will order our steps to show us what it is that you will have us to do on our daily, our day to day. <laughs> but um, I honor you, Father. I love you. And I'm just so grateful for dreams. I'm, I'm grateful for the interpretation of dreams. Uh, thank, thank you for Holy Spirit, Him, Holy Spirit, living and dwelling within us. Um, I just pray that you will help us and show us, you know, how, how we can show ourselves friendly to you. And not just with, with you, well, with you first, but with others as well. Help us to be able to find the lost. Because you said that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Help us to show ourselves friendly to those people who may be lost. To those people who may not know you. To those people who may still be stuck in the world. Because I know you came for the lost. Not the found. You came for the loss. So we love you. We honor you. We cherish you, Father God. We cherish our relationship with you. And we thank you for another one of your days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I love y'all. I thank y'all for tuning in. Please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And I'll bring you more and more prophetic videos and makeup videos and, you know, fashion videos. It's coming. Just be patient, but it's coming. Love y'all. See ya.